The next item I need for the workbench is a signal generator, uh, especially an RF signal generator. I have four or five different generators in the warehouse, ranging from an HP, a Tektronix, uh, several Heath kits, even a couple of Icos. When I saw this Con Air on eBay, it intrigued me. I knew nothing about the Con Air name, where it came from, what part of the country, and this unit looked like it was in the 70s or 80s with the displays here. It's very simplistic in its layout with an RF level, a power on off, audio, RF, the tuning, band select, the modulation off, AM and FM, which intrigued me, and modulation level. This caught my eye when I was looking at the eBay posting. This RCA jack would only have been put onto a cheaper kit or school type environment. And like I said, I knew nothing about Con Air. The two layers of the case are different colors which could mean something inside. I searched the net and found that National Radio Institute started a division called Conair Instruments in 1961. It supported their student section. It seems like National Radio Institute was an East Coast school whereas on the West Coast, you had Bill and Hal. I also found a note from a gentleman called Lou Furlong. His call letters are KA3FLU. He said that the difference between the 281 and the 282 were some typo errors on the PC board and that the Capacitors associated with the coils were mounted on the side on the 281 and the 282 they were mounted on the board. So let's open this up and take a look. What an interesting layout. One single board for all functions and a display board. It looks like we have a power here, power supply circuit with a full wave bridge. We have a 5 volt regulator. We have a 15 volt regulator. We have the display driver here. We have a divide by 10 IC. And it looks like we have a frequency counter chip here. Q1 and Q2 appear to be where the oscillator would be. Then hidden in here we have what looks like two dual gate FETs. One of these two transistors must be the driver transistor for the output. The other one is probably a display driver. We have one, two, three, four, five coils, and they correspond to the setting on the front for the five bands. We also have five caps. It looks to me like this would be the low frequency adjust and this would be the high frequency adjust for each one of those bands. Now if you could imagine that this thing was made in 1979 as a kit using these ICs, this really was state of the art for the time. I'm quite impressed with uh, the layout of this unit. 
Let's open up and take a look at the bottom. Our power line is coming in, going through the fuse to a transformer. Being a 15 volt regulator on the front side, this transformer probably is a 12.6 center tap. This cap looks like it's the main filter cap for the unit. It's a 4,000 microfarad at 25 volts, and it looks like the date code on it is 1979. So we're close in the guessing of when this unit was manufactured. Looks like it's got a generic AM-FM air cap here, air tunable cap. The wiring looks fairly straightforward. If this was a kit, the individual who did it did a really good job of, of soldering everything. I think I'm going to bring this up on the Variac and we'll see if anything blows. Okay, the unit itself is on. Variac is turned down. It's on. We'll bring her up to 20 volts and see what happens. How about 40? Bring it up to 60, 80, 100. And we're starting to have some display. Let's bring her all the way up to 120. I'm not feeling anything warm and I don't have any smoke. So let's let it run for a few minutes and I'll hook it up to the scope and we'll see what happens. Okay, when I adjust the modulation level, it looks like that's working fine. I'm reading here 178 and the frequency counter on the scope is saying 178. So that looks pretty accurate. Let's go ahead and check the power supply and see what that looks like. Okay, we'll hook up to the 5 volt rail. And it looks like we have about a 20 millivolt ripple on it. The voltmeter is reading 5.017 that looks pretty solid okay let's look at the 15 volt side that is the 15 volt side and it looks like we have just about the same amount of ripple. And the voltage is 14.51, which is probably okay. Okay, it looks like the two rails are okay. Now let's check the 1K source coming off of here just out of curiosity I believe that if we go to the output of the modulation control okay it looks like the 1k signal is actually 1.23 kilohertz. I don't know if that's anything really to worry about or not. We might be able to adjust it by changing a resistor. 
but for all intents and purposes right now it looks like the unit is working fine. Okay, in the alignment procedure it says put the RF frequency to setting A and adjust the coil for 0, 0 0.175 Then tune all the way to the other end till it's fully to that extreme and adjust the cap to 0 0.545. Now let's go back and check the low end. That should be 7.5 on the end. Let's go back to the top. That should be 5.45. Okay, we'll go back to the bottom. 175. 544. 545. 545. Okay, next we go to B. Go to the low end and adjust it for 0, 0, 0.540. Go to the top and adjust for 1.610.
I went to the garage and grabbed my AM FM clock radio that I used there. And I hooked it up on the workbench to see what this Conair can do. Let's see if we can find a actual channel here. Let's go to 1000. Actually, where are we on the, the dial here? Looks like we're about 120. There it is. That looks pretty good. Let's go to FM. And FM, we're at, uh, looks like around 107. So, Sorry, 111.1. And FM seems to be working. Eh, strange little generator. But we'll put it on the workbench and we'll use it for the time being until we can get something else up and going. If you found this video useful or entertaining, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to click on the bell icon to be notified of upcoming videos. Stay safe, stay healthy, and thanks for watching.